So let's address a very touchy topic, teaching. Do students like the way they're being taught in classrooms today? Well, let's find out how they feel and what they feel teachers should be doing instead. What better way to get a true analysis of the quality of teaching in our school systems beyond a state exam or a 15 minute administrative observation than straight from students themselves? This video is designed for parents, teachers, and even educational trainers who are looking for innovative tech tips that will demonstrate how to make children fall in love with learning, teaching them the way they prefer to be taught by meeting them where they are based on their point of view in the classroom. Thanks for tuning in to Techie Tamika's tips for life, work, and entertainment. Be sure to subscribe. So we can agree that school is quite similar to a business. Really it is. We have goals and objectives. They attend eight hours a day and students are like customers. And we know the greatest companies put their customers first by valuing their opinion and allowing their customers input to remain at the forefront of their business productivity, which is based primarily on the satisfaction of their customers. But when was the last time you ever had students attend a teacher workshop or even a student survey changing the way teachers design curriculum? Post that in the comments, please. Now, if I don't get any comments, it's because it never happens. Now let's bring it back to you. When have you ever experienced leaving a meeting and although the trainer was very knowledgeable, it seemed to have sucked the life out of you. Think about attending that same meeting for nine months straight. How would you feel? Now, you better tell me how you would honestly feel in the comments, don't be shy. Well, that's exactly what students feel like when they have to attend classes that literally suck their brain cells dry and they are dying for a way to escape mental freedom. Counting down the hours till lunchtime, an extracurricular class, or to just go home. Even being sick can sometimes feel like a vacation, which shouldn't be the case at all. I don't want you to feel like well, learning is not all about fun and games, so why is she bringing this up? When in reality, we have attended meetings that balance fun and games like round robins, icebreakers, group riddles and puzzles, scavenger hunts. They even provide treats and snacks and even gamification style quizzes to make Q&A, well, fun. So my question is, why aren't we doing the same thing for our young learners? if we acquire the same strategies as adults. I'm not about to make this video based on what I feel or believe because many teachers will beg to differ. However, it should be highly valued that we hear input directly from who we are serving, which are our students. I honestly never asked my sons about how they preferred to learn and decided to ask them randomly about their experiences with using technology. And here's what they had to say. I would say, uh, 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 on my own. Oh, it's really both. It just depends on the teacher. But when I was in school, the, te the class would work at a slower pace than I was. So it made the work kind of boring because I wanted to get the work out the way and just be able to do other things. But for online school, you don't have to worry about that. It's all at your own pace. Hey. From my perspective, I just simply add more games for me because I feel like it will help me connect to the educational system better and I won't be so lost um, and behind with all the other students that are not getting the work. Now, I know you're probably like, how would I change my entire curriculum into eight hours of games? Remember, the goal is to meet students where they are. We have to adapt to their world. And if this means digital learning, then we must be creative and find technology that allows us to do just that. I'm referring to game-based learning. 
like video games. I'm not talking about having children in a classroom playing Fortnite, Super Mario Brothers, Call of Duty, and Grand Theft Auto. I'm talking about educational games, but those that take you into more of a game-based adventure to challenge students to solve problems effectively on their own. Best of all, it's fun, and it helps teachers to aim towards student long-term goals. So the question is, how do we as humans compete with technology? Or better yet, let's hear from a child's point of view on how we could make learning more adaptive to how they would rather learn using game-based learning. When I was in ninth grade, I started a course called Gaming Unlocked. And this is where basically they teach you how to make a game and how to input certain game-based learning into your normal everyday activity. So when you're learning about how to, let's say, how to ride a bike, you can just think of normal stuff like a game that you can, stuff you can do inside of a game and it will be a lot easier instead of it's feeling like work. It feels like you're having fun and it's enthusiastic. So yeah, that's why I like game-based learning and online school overall. I get happy when I play a video game because I just feel like I can connect with video games. I feel like I am one with the video game when I play. And I get really good at it. I like putting myself to new limits. I want to be the best at every game I play. Because educational games to me brings out the competitive spirit and me like I said earlier and it just makes me want to learn even more rather than reading just books um, that really that's fun but it gets boring over time if you just keep staring at a book by understanding the simple factors of how children view learning adults parents and teachers can help bring learning to their world and when I say their world I mean digitally Children of today are digital natives, but when we were growing up, digital learning was slowly being introduced. This is why we collide in strategizing the right learning path for digital natives. While we had encyclopedias, they had YouTube and Google. And while we had a way to explore ideas escaping the world in a good book, they had well, they do have educational documentaries they can indulge in via Netflix or using digital virtual reality libraries that have them exploring parts of the world and even parts of the sea or even out of space that we could never imagine by reading a good book alone. Before I leave you all bent off out of shape and puzzled on how you're going to start meeting children where they are, let me share some educational programs that have incorporated game-based learning on another level. Arcademics. It's a really cool site for game-based learning for K through eighth grade that covers a wide range of subjects. It includes an educational portal that allows teachers to monitor student progress, generate detailed reports, and assess student learning. Answerables. It's an innovative site that is a cross between game-based learning and a learning management system, helping educators to gamify a lesson. Bamboozle. This allows teachers and parents to design educational games and it's 100% free. I'm not going to spoil the fun by showing you everything here, so visit their site to start playing because the best part is no account is needed. Edu Candy. This is where teachers can turn quiz questions into interactive learning games in a matter of minutes. You get a shareable code, let the kids start playing, and let the games begin. Reading Racer, where children get to learn how to increase fluency by playing a challenging racing game. I must share with you this clip of a five-year-old playing the game while learning to read. It's amazing. To this little piggy stayed home. This little piggy little. went to to piggy piggy went to the the market the market 
this, this, this little, little piggy stayed home. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had had uh, rose rose beef Th and this little no. piggy had none this little piggy had roast beef this little piggy had none Lastly, is YouTube Kids. Well, instead of YouTube for adults, they have YouTube for Kids. You probably didn't even know. Where children can explore age-appropriate variations of interesting video games for toddler, baby, preschool, and kids. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You're like, okay, no more YouTube, no more YouTube. But the best thing about the YouTube Kids is that it's filtered and it's safe and age-appropriate. Okay? Now, my goal is to open your mind of how gaming could be fascinating and meaningful if linked appropriately with education. Now, your goal should be to design new lesson plans that accommodate digital learner needs while still achieving academic goals for young learners. You never know, you just might be able to design a team that could make a revolutionary curriculum that is virtually educational. That would be a techie to make a dream. And as always, thanks for watching and continuing to visit my channel. Hey subs, I'm adjusting my channel uploads, so expect new videos weekly. If you don't see uploads by Wednesday, trust, they are on the way. Like, share, and subscribe if you're a newbie so I can continue making valuable content on tech advice that is useful for work, your life, and everyone's entertainment. See you on the next video.